Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works, and we're going to continue on with a second video of a three-part video where we're doing some modifications to my dump trailer. It's not really an RV type repair, but in this video, um, we do talk about, uh, I'm gonna basically be installing a battery disconnect switch, but in the spirit of Darren, <laughs> we're gonna be talking about battery inrush, we're gonna be designing the circuit, talk about wire gauge size, the importance that when you design a circuit, you need to make sure that all the little pieces that, that that circuit goes through are rated for the right current. And on my dump trailer where the thing's raising and lowering, we get some inrush and we get some amp draw from that. We're also gonna learn how to drill a rectangular hole. So um, this is a separate channel. I'll call it like a sister channel or a sibling channel to our Meyer V Works channel. Um, uh, my wife and I were having uh, some discussion on what we might call our second channel. And um, we're having such a good time with our My RV Works channel where we really, really try to focus just on RV repair type stuff. But then there's some other channels that we wanted to offer more content that's not really you know, specific to RV repair. So we started another channel called Life Kept Simple and or the Kept Simple channel. And um, uh, our last name is Kept, so it rhymes with step. So we're going to call it that. <laughs> so anyway that's this video here that you're about to watch was made for that kept simple channel but since we do talk about batteries and inrush and wire gauge things like that it really does kind of have a place within the marvy works channel so this is the second part of a three-part video that i did on modifying my dump trailer and we'll put links above for the first part and then the second uh, well, this is a second, but then the third part. The third part's exciting. We're going to automate it. Yeah. So anyway, enjoy this video and um, hopefully we'll see you on the third part of this video where we start to play with some really cool automation stuff. All right. Have a good ride. So I've got you set up on a tripod there to watch what we're working on here. So my plan, and I need to verify that it'll fit, but my plan is to take this switch and there, I put the battery box in here. You can watch the first video to see the challenges we had to overcome to make this fit. Um, so I'm not gonna reference this anymore. You can go um, watch the first video for the for this part. But there's a void right in here, and I feel that that would be a really great place to put this switch. What that'll do is that'll put the switch part on the backside here, and um, it's it's not gonna be an advertised thing. Like if you're a bad person trying to take my thing, you're, you may not know to look back here. And that might be an idea that I would share with you. If I put this thing right in the front or up on the top or something like that, a bad guy is going to say, oh, yeah, hey, look, there's a switch right there. Oh, I have one of those in my pocket. So I, I kind of want to put this in a, a place that's kind of out of the way. Now, they do have a hole right here. But I really like the idea of it being back in this little triangular spot. What I might do is bring you around and show you that. Now, the reason I want to put it there is because... In, in, I referenced a minute ago that you could always gain access to these lugs and move your thing over. But if it's way down here, that's going to make it a little difficult for, for that to happen. So for several reasons, I am liking this switch back here. Now, what I need to do is I need to prove that when this trailer is, is lowered, that I've actually got enough clearance that it's not going to hit it. Now, I'm, I'm comfortable that it's not, but I don't want to go through all this effort and then it hit it. Does that make sense? So the first thing I need to prove is that I have room to mount this back here and that when the dump bed comes down, it's not going to hit my key off. So I need to reconnect some of these wires um, so I can energize my dump bed. So we're going to put this on. Um, now, I, all I need to do, this thing's not under a lot of stress here. So I'm just going to kind of rough it. What I mean by that is, yes, I have all the correct wrenches and all this kind of stuff, but um, let's just, uh, it's a, um, a work in progress, you know, project. So it's not like I'm, I'm gonna be going on a road with this thing vibrating. Make sense? I should at least be able to dump my bed. All I need to do is lower it a little bit to make sure I have enough clearance. So 
Ground is a little loose, but let's see what we got here. Lowering safety prop. Lowering. Yes, this will be nice. Let me close this. I'm going to show you what we're dealing with here. Yeah, I'm going to bring you around over here and show you what we're dealing with. So here you see with the dump bed closed, I have enough room here to actually get to my key. You know, I have this much more space here. So I'm okay with putting this back in this spot, okay? And uh, so that's that's the gap I have to play with right in, in there. And um, while I've got you in handheld mode, it's this spot right in here. That little triangular space is where I'm going to put this. And I'm going to try to go down as far as I can. Um, and again, the reason is because I want to make it difficult to get to those lugs. Okay? So let me go put you back in your little tripod area. But um, that's where we're at. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to elevate the bed. Um, I'm going to need to work over here. So I'm going to go pretty much up all the way. I'm going to hit the up button here. One thing I wanted to do, I want to see how many amps this thing is consuming when it's dumping. Let's see here. I'll do it so we can both see. I'm just zeroing out it here. Okay, zeroing out it. <laughs> that's crop. That's pro proper English. Okay, so here we go. Now there's going to be an inrush. In fact, let me let me see something. Okay, I have another meter that's going to read inrush. So bear with me for a second. I wouldn't mind having that other meter meter here. I want to see what the inrush is on this. Okay, so I've got my two fluke meters. Gosh, I probably got ten fluke meters, but. Um, this one I'm going to use, I'm going to zero out, but there may be a glare on the screen, but I, I can see it and I'll tell you. So I've got him in DC current mode and I've zeroed him out and I've got this one in DC current mode and I've zeroed him out. I'm going to hit the inrush button. So what this one's going to show me is the inrush. The inrush is how much current this motor consumes to start. Okay. Um, and this one's going to read the continuous current. What might be fun is to record min max. No, I don't want to record min max. I'm not going to record min max on this. So, like I said, there may be a glare, but I'll tell you what I see. So, this one's set to record the inrush, um, and this one's set to just read current. So, here we go. I'll tell you what the numbers are. So, 142, 141, inrush 274. I'm at 130 amps. That's a lot of amperage. Um, 138. 137 amps. 137 amps. 136. Okay. So it took 136 amps to run constantly. My end rush was 274 amps to just start this thing. So knowing we're at 136, it might be good. So let's let's design a circuit for like 200 amps. Um, it might actually be good to uh, turn these off. Um, the cool thing about this meter, it's a Fluke 375 FC, is I can pair this meter to my phone, and it could also be a data logger, and the current draw that it was just doing could have been plotted on my phone. And so I can save that as a file. So the if you've got some bucks and you're liking meters, the 375 is, is a really, really nice meter. Um, the, uh, what is this one? A 325. This is my everyday carry meter. I use this for just about everything. AC, DC current, AC, DC um, amps. It'll do um, capacitors, temperature. Um, so this is my everyday carry meter. This is the one that I use for inrush and for logging. Okay. And um, so if you have a meter fetish, and then we've got other ones. So knowing that I want to design this, I want these cables to be rated for about 200 amps. And um, so there's a little bit of melting going on here. So I'm wondering if the wires are a little bit too small for the job. Um, now, that reminded me, this one was kind of loose. 
So what I want to do, let me tighten this and see if that makes any change at all on the amp draw. I want to make sure all my, my leads are tight because if the electrons have to make a jump, it slows things down or creates uh, resistance. So let me get my wrenches and tighten these really well. And um, then we will run that test again with this one tight. The number to beat is 136. Okay, well now that I've tightened down the lugs on these conductors, I want to run this test again to see if my amp draw is the same. <clears throat> now, remember, this is with an empty trailer. There's nothing in this trailer. So if I had, you know, 10 tons of gravel or something in it, um, it this motor is going to work a lot harder. So I think I will be upgrading these wire gauges. So um, I've got uh, zero. Everybody's cleared out. So let's see what our numbers are now. I've got this one set for inrush. This time I'm 266. And he's 145, 143. Again, the number to beat is 136. 139. Okay, so it's about the same. 138. Okay, so on an empty trailer, it's consuming 137 amps in order for that pump to lift up an empty trailer. Um, I would bet that if that trailer, now I'm at 135. So the numbers are, are the same. The inrush is pretty much the same. We're within uh, 10 amps of what it originally was. There we go. Uh, what is it coming down? Oh, here, let me do my inrush coming down. So I'm at 266 here, so I'm going to turn it off, turn it back on again. So I'm at zero, I'm at zero. Let's do inrush coming down. Coming down, I'm 271 inrush and 127 coming down. So, okay, going back up. 133. So um, what I've got here on site is some 2-watt welding cable. And uh, so I think what I'm going to do is change all these wires over to 2-watt welding cable. So if I'm designing the circuit for about 200 amps or so, or maybe even more, what I need to confirm uh, is that this is rated to handle that much current. Because if I were to put this in and it wasn't rated to handle 200 or 250 amps, we could melt this, okay? So everything's gotta be designed to specification. We can assume that this, the solenoid, the pump, all that is rated for, for spec. I, I guess I wanna see we can assume that because the engineers at Big Techs, that's the one they spec'd. And these are the wires that they used. Um, so this is a, what, number two? No, four, this is a number four. This is a number four wire. And uh, I'm just going to do a quick, I've got an app on my phone that tells me the, the opacities of different wire gauges, but I want to find out how many amps this wire can consume safely versus um, the, uh, the two out welding cable. And while I'm in here, another thing I don't see is any kind of fusing uh, here. Um, there's a fuse here, but this fuse is for the battery charger. Um, I would like there to be some kind of a protective circuit here on this fuse, um, and I don't see that either. So I might actually, this is interesting. So I might, I'm not only am I going to, not only am I going to install a disconnect switch, but I think I'm also going to install a fuse. Um, but now that I know I want to design this thing for about 250 amps or so, going through this wire I said 200 but I might even shoot for 250 because if the thing's under load I need to make sure that this switch can handle that current that the wiring can handle the current and then I want to fuse it as well so I'm going to go do some um, configuring to find out if all these things I'm going to put on that is to say let's say this switch is only rated for I don't know 100 amps and I put this thing in here and it's consistently got over you know 130 amps going through it eventually this is going to get very very hot and it'll eventually melt Okay, so um, I need to read the spec. Here it is. Uh, here's the box. Okay, I got no information here. So I've got the manufacturer's information maybe. So I'm going to take a few minutes and um, see sometimes manufacturers will put their ratings on their devices and uh, they didn't do that. So let me take a few minutes and make sure we're designing the circuit properly. So we've done a little bit of homework. Um, here's what I've found. 
This is a number four gauge wire and its rating is for 70 amps. Two gauge, I'm sorry, two aught here. This would be like welding cable. <laughs> so you'll see the difference between the two. Two gauge is rated for 175 amps. So I'm gonna be replacing these two wires and even this little wire here with a larger two gauge wire. That way, when this trailer is getting its workout throughout the day, we're not creating resistance to our motor because it's not able to get enough current to the motor. The switch itself here, I looked it up, it's rated for 200 amps. So the switch itself could handle 200 amps. So I think I'm okay with the switch here, but I would like to upgrade my wire size. So we're gonna be upgrading our wire size while we're doing all this. Okay, so aren't these videos fun? I mean, what started off is like, hey, let's drill a hole and bolt the things on. Now, uh, Darren, the industrial automation engineer is uh, in full um, swing here, uh, designing spec and um, figuring all this stuff out. So, um, hey, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. And everything is to specification. So I'm going to upgrade my wire size to a bigger gauge wire. So that means we have to make a lug here, 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 and here. So we have to make little wires. Uh, we, we need to make four lugs on this. And on the black, we have to put a lug here down to this piece here. And uh, so that's the next part. So I think I'm going to be pulling the battery box out and... Um, what I'll do is I'm going to block the dump trailer so it doesn't bleed down on me because I'll be working on the other side of this box here pretty soon. So I'm going to get set up and uh, start cutting some of this wire up and putting the uh, crimps on the end. Okay, I backed you up a little bit and uh, two things have happened. Uh, Pacific Northwest, right? So it's, it's a very, very light drizzle, which isn't going to affect anything but the temperature dropped about 10 degrees in the last hour. And so it started off kind of warm today and now it's kind of cold. So I put a jacket on and we're working in a very light drizzle. So what we're gonna do is um, take, again, negative first, okay? Once you get your negatives off, I'm gonna grab some tie wraps here. Once you take your negative off, you've kind of rendered the positive side, uh, I wanna say relatively safe, because if you go watch the first video where we were talking about the battery box, um, it's uh, there's no way for the... When the, negative, when the negative lug is on the negative part of the battery, the negative is bonded to the frame. So everything that's metal on the frame that's that's got continuity to it is the ground plane chassis ground so what that is to say is if if this negative lug is touching the bonded to the frame then this is the opposite this is the positive side so now that i've taken the negative lead off i basically rendered the entire metal frame not the ground plane it's just a metal frame so now i can safely um relatively safer to take off my positive lead because if a tool were to touch metal it's not um catast catastrophic or as they say in pixels catastrophic <laughs> um in you kevin james fans so you you saw how in my first video i tie wrap all my stuff together so um that's fine so now what we're going to do is um, again, I wanted to put a new wire on this and uh, I am gonna get my socket set to take this wire off, okay? And um, it might be good at this point, I'm just planning ahead. I do need to get my socket set for this to do all these wires, but I think what I'll do at this point is go ahead and prep the hole and install my switch because as I'm making all these wires, I can actually connect them through my switch. And uh, I've also checked I the, the type of circuit breaker fuse that I want. I don't have one in stock that's rated for the size that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect all this without a fuse and then I'll get one ordered. And then when that comes in, I'll come back and install that. 
Um, okay, so um, let me pull this battery box out. Now, when I put the battery in on, on part number one, I pulled the strap off because I didn't want it here. So it's easy enough to just grab these and pull them out. So so now I want to put this here. Now, this I-beam, sorry, it's a C-channel. It's, a Z channel. Um, it's gonna force me to put this thing about right here. I, c I could go lower, but then I'm gonna have to drill through a lot of steel and I don't really feel like doing that. So we're basically gonna put this right in this area. So um, I need to cut a rectangular hole to fit that in. Um, got a couple different ways to do that, a sawzaw. I'm sure that so I've got, uh, from the industrial trades, I've got these knockout punches. They make perfect round holes, and I'm sure they probably have one that does this profile as well. But um, I don't have that one, so I'm going to have to go old school and just kind of cut this out. So what I'm going to do is get my uh, caliper and measure, do some measuring, and uh, we'll get this thing marked out um, and, and cut. Um, so let me go get a couple tools over here, and then we'll just start slicing and dicing this thing, okay? Okay, I moved you on that side because we're going to be drilling through on this side. <clears throat> so um, here's the here's how we're going to do this square, our rectangular hole. I'm just going to close that. So I've got a caliper here, one of these adjustable deals. And I don't know if you can see that very well, but I'm going to take the thickest part of this switch. And um, so that puts me right in that area. Okay. And I've looked at all my hole saws, and I've got a hole saw. It turns out that 7 8 is the size of the hole that I need to drill to get the thickest part in the center. Okay? So what I'm going to do is drill three 7 8 holes. So then when we're done, we're going to have three 7 8 holes. And I need to make sure that the, the top hole and the bottom hole are on the inboard side of my lip. Okay, so I'm going to drill the two outer holes first and then the inner hole last. And um, if I don't have enough meat left on my metal, then I can always take the saws off and cut that out. Okay, or yeah, so um, that's how we're going to make a rectangular hole. Let's drill three holes and then take the saws off and square out the edges. Okay, so. We've decided to put it, I think I'm gonna go right under this hinge. I think aesthetically that'll be kind of pleasing. And uh, let me make sure. Yeah, if I go right under my hinge point, um, that'll be, uh, actually, I'm gonna go just a little bit my side of the hinge point. I'm gonna, for aesthetics, I'm gonna take this half of my hinge. And the reason why is I see a little bit of rust going on here and I don't want the rust to be falling down. So, um, uh, oh, and I noticed something. Look, there's a Zerk fitting. Outstanding. There's Zerk fittings on this hinge cover. So when I grease my trailer, I'll have to remember to do those as well. So uh, let's see here. It's about halfway. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to take my soapstone. Okay, make a mark. Now, what I'm measuring here is my, my critical, um, the, the maximum I want my holes to be, okay? So I'm taking my caliper and I'm measuring out the, the outermost diameter of my hole that I need to make. Okay, so um, that crisscross, I don't know if you can see that. I might move you guys over, but that crisscross is where I want my bottom to be. So now I've taken um, the mark of this and marked it. So that is where I'm going to want the, the crisscross here on the top and the, and the cross on the bottom. That's where I want my top of my 7 8 holes. And then the line going up and down is my center point. 
So I've got a hole saw that's seven eighths, cutting oil, drill. My lovely wife was working with this hole saw and she cracked, or she fractured a couple fingers in her, uh, a couple bones in her fingers. So you have to hang on to the handle when you're working with these things. Uh, I need to get power, which is over there. Okay, so let me hop in here. Now I've got this uh, um, dump bed blocked. So if for some reason something happens to my hydraulics, it won't come crushing, crushing me. Okay, so I'll start at the um, I'll start at the top so that the oil will ooze itself down. Now, if you get your eyeball just right, you'll be able to um, figure out where the top of this thing is going to be. Let me, I'm going to get a, um, a center punch to make my pilot hole. I don't, I don't want the drill to walk around on me. So I'm basically putting my eyeball right along the top of this. I'm putting my uh, drill bit so I'm too high. Right about there. Now my drill starts to walk, I will hit it with a center punch. It wants to walk. So you do this guy. I've got a, a mark on my paint. Okay, so now that's left a little indention for the drill bit to kind of bite into. You could probably change out the drill bit, but this is what comes with the Milwaukee hole saw kit. So with that little indention I made, now he's not walking. He just broke through and that right there is where my wife, this drill just, it's seven amps. So it just took her and, and wrenched her hand around. So I've broken through. Okay. Grab on really tight. It, um, I'm going to put a pop right here because the oil is making my soapstone run a little bit. Um, so I want to remember where the bottom mark is. But I also, now that I have a hole in, I can check my measures one more time. So here we are. I'm measuring the uh, I'm I'm on the inside side of this. So there you go, and I'm doing it that way. So when the thing's in, it's it's slipped up and um, not having a big hole in the side. So we want to just make sure. Yeah. Okay. So our measurements are still good. I'm happy with that. Um, that is to say that um, where where I put my eyeball on this to see the top crisscross mark, hatch mark, um, I, I nailed it. Okay, so now we're gonna put our eyeball on the bottom side. I've still got enough of my white soapstone mark. Go up a little bit. Okay, we like that right there. That looks good to me right there. Ha, <laughs> that it slips. Uh, but I think I can see where it was. So let's see if that's a good, uh, if that's a good mark. 
Okay. Okay. Yep, that's very nice. Okay. So then the last one. I've got enough meat left here to cut it out. But, um... You know what, I, I don't think I'm going to cut it out because I'm going to be taking my sawzall and squaring that up. And if I cut it out, it, it'll, it won't have as, it won't be as easy to cut. So let me get my sawzall. Now another thing I'm going to do is just see how accurate I was in my alignment. Yeah, we're good there. I'm taking my eyeball and just making sure my two holes are aligned on top of each other and they are. So we're good there. Now my sawzall is way up in the front. Okay. more now I might need to square off my top a little bit yeah just a little but we're almost there oh so close so 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 close they have these half circle files that would be good but um this one's got, you know, filing on the edges, so I can just keep working it and I'll get there eventually. We like that. Beautiful. Okay, so then we have the two holes in the side for the bolts that are going to go through to hold it. So I'm going to use this tool again. And that'll make a mark where I need to drill to put the bolts through. Very nice. Um, I could rivet this. And maybe that's what I'll choose to do. Or I'll just put a bolt through it. The thing is, I want to go either aluminum or stainless steel. I don't want to go with a, a steel bolt. So I'm going to go see if I have stainless steel bolts to 
drill through to to bond this, okay? But uh, and then and then clean this up. Yeah, we'll get some towels and clean that up a little bit. So we've got our rectangular hole drilled for this to mount, and um, and now I want to fasten it that way. But it good. Okay, well, there we have the switch on the outside mounted. Use stainless steel screws. And then on the inside, luckily for me, I had little nylon nut um, nylon nuts. So stainless steel nylon nuts. That's what I happen to have here on site. So that was a win. But here you could see the rectangular cut. You saw how I did that. And um, so now it's bonded. So with that, we'll pull back here. And um, now that we've got that installed, We'll go ahead and, you know, cut up some of our um, 2 aught cable with uh, the ends. And um, and here here you see how I've blocked off my trailer. Um, start making some power connections. I break this up into the power circuit and the control circuit. So what I'm going to be focusing on next is the power circuit. Um, and then that'll finish this up. And there's our, our supervisor here. Um, there's his butt, <laughs> Mr. Fluffy Butt. Yeah, that would be, I believe, Romper. And um, he's supervising to make sure everything is, is good. So, uh, yep, yeah, that's Romper. So he's checking to make sure my work is good. So um, I'm going to continue working so he has more to inspect. Now, I went ahead and put the battery box back in. Just I wanted to see, was my all my planning worth it? I mean, did I bump into the... Do, do these bolts bump into the box and everything. So I'm really pleased with, with how this is going to come together. I've got plenty of room. I've got my switch on the back. And um, so we're gonna be replacing this wire. He went from the positive of the battery directly to the pump solenoid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a switch in place. We're, we're gonna put a switch right here. So when that switch, if we don't drop it. So basically this is where the switch is gonna go. Okay, so we're basically disconnecting this circuit. Make sense? Um, so I'll do this red one first. Okay, so we're going to go from the battery to the switch and then from the switch to there, to the pump solenoid. Ground is a bit easier. There are two grounds. The bigger ground is going to go to the block of the pump manifold. And then they have about a 10 gauge that's going to the frame, okay? Um, and and so we'll be replacing though that, that one as well. So I'm pleased with how this is all fitting together. Let's pull that out. Um, I think the one that's gonna go to the pump solenoid to the switch, I'm gonna go to the bottom. And uh, polarity does not matter on these. Yeah, you might have a pretty view um, from picture from video one. I ground all this down and painted it, so now you get to see that. So we I'm going to leave the bolt on the back because I'm going to use it as a jam nut. Okay, I'm going to jam nut my lug to these two bolts. So I need to get a, a second 11 16th to grab that guy. So um, that lug will go there. That lug will go there. And we have our number two. So um, let me take him off. Now, I, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but um, I looked and I do not have a um, the circuit breaker that I want for this. I have fuses, but I want to be able to reset this and not have to go find a blown fuse. So I'm going to order that the circuit breaker, resettable circuit breaker. It's a kind, if you have an RV, if you have a Class A RV, they're, they're the type that you would find in your Class A RV. Uh, they got the little little lever and a little trapdoor button on the bottom. So I'm going to mount him probably right here. 
So since I'm gonna order that, right now I'm gonna go from the positive of the battery to one lug of the switch, bottom lug of the switch, back to the pump solenoid. But the wire that's gonna go from the plus battery to the switch, I'm going to plan on taking them off the plus of the battery and putting them on one side of my circuit breaker. And then I'll go from the plus of the battery to the circuit breaker, from the circuit breaker to the top of my switch, and then through the switch, bottom of the switch over to the pump solenoid, Well, how that power circuit will work, okay? So I need to make a, um, I need to put this lug on my number two welding cable. So we need to get this lug on here. So there we go, it's on. All right. So now let me get my <clears throat> I'm going to save you the agony. So that is now compressed onto the conductor. Um, I'm going to save you the agony of watching me make a bunch more of those. You saw how I did it. And um, I looked. And I have the really nice marine grade um, heat shrink but I don't have it big enough for the number two, so I'm gonna to have to go with black. And so this is going to go, I'm gonna basically cut it in half. Well, here, I'll show you this part. So I'm gonna show you this first one, and then there's no reason for you to go through the agony of watching me make all these others. But um, I'll do this first one, we'll do the first one together, and then um, we will uh, do a fancy film edit where all of a sudden you come back and they're done. How's that? So I would like this heat shrink to be red, but I don't have the, I have black the size of a number two, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a two watt cable, but I don't have the, uh, I don't have it in red, so. We'll have it in black, that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna lay him flat, right? There's the next one. So before I crimp this, I might need to orient this a different way because I don't want my cable to be all twisted and mangled. So I wanted to show you that. So when you're making these cables, be advised that when you crimp your second piece, kind of give the lug the orientation that you want it. That way your cable's not all twisted. So he's gonna be like that. And I'm gonna want this one about like that. So I'm gonna take my Sharpie and just make a mark, see? Here. And that way, so if this one's flat, so if the one on my left hand's flat, you'll notice that he's kind of more at a 45. But by doing it that way, the, the cable's relaxed. Okay, so 
I'm going to go ahead and stop you guys. I'm going to go ahead and crimp this and um, put the heat shrink on it and do the same thing to this red one here. And then I'll make another one that goes to here to where my battery is going to go. And then we'll pick up once I'm done with that. Like I said, there's no reason for you to watch me do all this. It takes time, but I'm going to save your bandwidth and save your time. Okay, we're pretty much um, at the end of part two of the video. Um, I've, I'm going I'm to bring you over and give you some close-ups. Maybe you'll benefit from that. But I've got my switch over here. I left the red one long because, remember, I'm going to put a, um, an inline circuit breaker, an inline fuse in this circuit right here. Um, and... Um, I left black long a little, uh, black a little long too, just to the, the, the negative. Um, I'd rather have a little bit more than, than being too short. <clears throat> this little wire here that goes from the pump solenoid to the motor, uh, the pump motor, I decided to leave it on. I'm going to monitor this. Uh, I want to see, it. he is a smaller gauge wire, but I want to monitor it. Maybe I'll run it and get my flare meter on it to see if it's getting hot. That would be an indication that there's too many amps going through it if the wire's getting hot. And as soon as I see that, I'll, I'll change it out. The challenge is I want to know this, the, the, the amp rating of this solenoid right here before I, I change this out. That is to say, I could have a two gate and a two watt cable from the solenoid to the pump motor, but then the solenoid itself is not rated, and I just don't know what the rating is on that. I, I can't get any part numbers off of it. it. Might be on the backside or something that I just can't see. But um, I do have my num my two watt from the battery to the switch, from the switch to the pump solenoid, and um, I put that one in a piece of loom down in here. I'm going to bring you around and show you this. Okay, you, you've been with me this long, so I'll finish up. So in there, you'll see um, where the, uh, the, mm, the lugs are bolted to the, um, the switch. On this side is where we have our switch, and the key is removable. Okay. Oh, we need to do a final test. Um, when I made all these connections, I put the, um, where is it, this product right here, you see it gets a lot of use, so the can's kind of ugly, but it's a battery corrosion pre preventative. Um, so everywhere where the lugs were screwed, I put that on there. Um, so let, let's see if this thing works now. I haven't even tried that. So key switch is in the on position. I will press the down button. I've taken my thing out. Let's see what happens. You know, an exciting thing to do would be to check the amp draw now that we have larger cables. And then let's check up. Okay, good. Now I'm going to remove the key. Key is taken out. Let's try up and down now. And I have nothing at all. So that circuit is a good circuit. One final thing. Let me go throw you guys back up on the tripod there. And let's do an amp draw. The only difference, the only thing we've done differently is we've used a larger gauge wire, a larger gauge cable. And um, since the cable's larger, I'm just curious to see all, the, all, all other things being the same if there's a change in the consumption of the current going to the pump motor. So let's finish up with that test. Okay, I'm going to put the key back in. And... Go to DC, clamp around that, DC mode, zero out. Actually, I want to do the full test. Where's my buttons? Here we are. So um, DC, I'm going to go down. The big test was when it was going up. That's where it's going to work the hardest. Coming down, there's hardly anything. Um, I do see the fluid coming back to the tank here when we're coming down. Um, if you need to put fluid in your tank, it's just ATF Dextron 3. That's the type of fluid that would go in a hydraulic reservoir here. And... Good. Now I want to do a test here. I'll be able to, uh... yeah, I can get my key in and out with the dump in the down position. So beautiful there. Okay, so let's zero this out. 
There may be a glare, I don't know. So let's go up with it. I'm not gonna do the inrush. I just wanna see if when this dump is raising, the number to beat is 136 amps. Here we go. Okay, we're at 142, 140, 139. So it seems to be about the same. One thing that might be exciting is um, on a future mod is to put an amp current thing on here. So we're down to 132. So we're actually saving about four amps. And the only, they're at 131. One thirty. So that's interesting. The lowest we got on the other one with the number four wire was one thirty six, and here we got two hot, and it's one thirty. So we saved ourselves six amps. But there is a relationship between the electrons working their way through the wire. The electrons don't actually move through a wire; they vibrate. Uh, so you don't have an electron moving; they're just vibrating. But we're not going to get into electron theory. Um, maybe in another video we might do that. Or actually, I've had some requests to get into that on my Myerby Works uh, website. So maybe I'll just make a video and we'll share it on both. But we'll get into some electron theory on how the wire, how the electrons work. And in fact, they're actually going through the negative. But um, forget I said all that. I, I get kind of excited about um, electricity sometimes. So anyway. Well, folks, I'm going to wrap up video two right here because the goal of video two was to install that disconnect switch. And it was in the process of installing that disconnect switch that uh, we decided to do an amp rating. We decided to upgrade our wire gauge. Uh, we did some testing on the amp consumption to going to the pump motor. Um, and uh, we decided to add an inline fuse, which we're gonna add later. I don't have the, the size that I need. I wanna do a little bit more um, testing on this to find out the right size of circuit breaker. Uh, these are the kinds that are like square. They have a little trap door and a little lever. That's the kind I want. Because if I were to blow a fuse, I want to be able to reset it. But I do want there to be a fuse because if something goes awry, I want that fuse to switch and not melt my wire or burn up something else. So let's let that fuse take the hit. I'm thinking maybe a 250 amp, but I want to verify those numbers on that fuse. Um, remember, the purpose of a fuse is to protect the wire. So the wire rating is 175 amps and we're sitting 130 down it, so the wire is happy with that. Um, what I do want to do is under load, we're going to go get some gravel here, and then I want to see how many amps a pump consumes when we're under load, and then um, that'll be exciting to know, and I'll share that with you when we do that. Uh, maybe we'll call that video four, I don't know. If this added value to you, if this was helpful, give us a thumb up, subscribe to our channel. So if you join me for the third part, that's the one I think is going to be pretty exciting. We're going to make that one with that remote control thing where I can control it. And there's going to be some tricky wiring that we're going to have to do to make that work. And we're going to get into all that. I'll probably take you inside on a grease board that I have and kind of draw some pictures to help get that into your mind. So that's going to be on video three. I'll make a link to it up there. And, um, or maybe I already did. I don't remember. But, um, so join me for part three of this same thing. I'm just going to pick right up as if the video kept rolling. I might go grab some lunch and uh, then we're going to pick up right where we left off with video three where we're going to then install the remote control switch to this and go into some of the more fancier wiring things. I think that's going to be an exciting video so I hope you join me. So from Darren uh, uh, where we say uh, things around here are kept simple. So uh, thanks for watching and we hope to see you on the third video.